Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. My name is John Cameron. I'm your uh, temporary fill-in host. Uh, and, and on my left, your right, is uh, Richard Fields, uh, libertarian to the core and longtime producer of Libertarian... No, not producer. Longtime... Host. Host yeah. of uh, Libertarian Counterpoint. And before that, Libertarian... Conspiracy. Conspiracy, yeah. yes. That's, I like the show much better when it was called... Uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we're going to have uh, Zach Kincaid, who's new to the show. This is Zach Hi. on my right, on your left, folks at home, um, who's uh, uh, launching an affiliate uh, Libertarian Party organization in, in uh, Yellow County. Yes. So you want to tell us a little bit about who you are and how you came to this mindset and what you're trying to do, maybe a couple, five minutes at the top, something like that? Um, all right, so I'm Zach Kincaid. Um, I've been a libertarian for a very, very long time. I probably not as long as you guys, but maybe close. What are you trying to yeah. say, man? <laughs> uh, but uh, now I've been uh, got active in the the uh, libertarian party uh, two years ago, and uh, we've been trying to get a, a county affiliate party started there mm -hmm. to try to help get some uh, local guys elected to at least have like some kind of a, a base to start with, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, Seeing as how the Northern California GOP is kind of toothless, and mm. my I phil ph philosophically I align much much more with the LP, I decided to go that route. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. All right. Now you work in uh, you work in the private sector, and you've yeah. been in you've been in uh, ag for a long time, and now you're working in a in a uh, welding shop that's uh, uh, private sector. Yeah. Uh, and so you run into, we talk about the regulatory environment, the anti-business environment, especially in the state of California, especially in the greater Sacramento area, which is the hardest place to start and run a business in the country, folks. Uh, we're number one. Um, you want to, you, you got any stories that come to mind about the, um, the impossibility or the difficulty of being in that business? Uh, it is very difficult for a lot of private sector shops to compete with union contracts, and uh, uh, there have been a lot of like bigger jobs that basically they, they don't they don't go out unless you're union. Mm -hmm. And then uh, anything that's related to state is all prevailing wage type jobs, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, most employers try to like av either avoid that or be big enough to absorb some of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I found my spot in a small shop where yeah. we just work with other local businesses and they're mm -hmm. much much better for me okay so what yeah. can uh, our viewers and you have a, a, a contact that our, our viewers could uh can we put it up um on the website if you give it to us if you don't have it with you now yeah. can we can we put it up uh, on the website so people get in, can get in touch with zach to help them yeah. i always thought the, the 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 biggest selling point for uh, libertarians uh is uh is something that they support, but but don't use as a lever or or a uh, as leverage or a pressure point. And that's you know with our with our schools being such abysmal failures, especially through the pandemic, as I like to call it, uh, the voucher, you know, the idea of the voucher that yeah. uh, um, you know that the government shouldn't be. Uh, shouldn't be propagandizing their your kids and you should have an alternative and and how much how well it's worked everywhere else and uh i think that you know if i was if i was starting off libertarian that's how i'd go door knocking right there yeah. all right well let's uh and we'll give we'll give uh zach since he's a little bit warmed up uh um second crack we're going to talk about uh once again alameda county is sued over racial preferences in awarding government contracts. So, state of California, uh, a number of years ago, uh, the people spoke, and they spoke quite, li quite, quite loudly, um, that there shouldn't be uh, racial quotas in hiring. And yet, uh, constantly, uh, cities, counties, and the state, and school districts, and all the rest of that, uh, put in uh, racial quotas in in uh, in assigning government and awarding government contracts. Um, I myself benefited in a bidding bidding process from a uh, not a racial quota but a a uh, veterans quota 
And at that time, I wasn't a disabled veteran. They, the state of California has to give something approximating 10% of their contracts to veteran-owned businesses. I should get back in that scam, shouldn't I? Yeah, get some of that gimme money. Anyway, uh, Richard, what do you think of that? Well, you're talking about the, the uh, Ward Connolly uh, initiative that yeah, it yeah, got yeah. rid of affirmative action uh, on paper. Oh, on uh, paper. On paper. But it, but it, it's it still you know raises its, its ugly head. Mm. Uh, the, the whole idea of affirmative action is is that uh, minorities, whether it's actual majority like women or racial minorities or uh, sexual preference minority or, or you know you name it, mm -hmm. uh, can't compete on their own. When the fact is, pretty much anybody uh, can compete on their own uh, in a job or in mm. the uh, business uh, uh, milieu wherever it is, and. Giving Unless you're non-union, in which case, yeah. giving giving uh, you know giving uh, a uh, unfair advantage to any minority group is in itself unfair, mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, company that or the uh, foundation that you and I used to uh, to do a little work for, mm -hmm. uh, Pacific Legal Foundation, I believe, is uh, suing uh, Alameda County to make them stop, make them actually follow the law as written, which of mm -hmm. course is what they should have been doing all along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, um, you know, I, I always wanted to play in the NBA, and it seems to me that, that there's obvious age bias and race bias and height bias in the NBA. Particularly height bias. The height bias, and I don't know why uh, old, short, slow white guys should be kept away from the glory that is, is the NBA. I think it's obvious racism, and I think I should file a lawsuit what do you think, Richard? Well, yeah, go for it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tongue in cheek, folks. That was what we used to call a joke. Uh, anyway, so once which again, is which is a problem right now. You can't yeah. tell uh, jokes without being without upsetting the entire woke community. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, and that's another story. Yeah, we well, won't go into a that. bunch of woke. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can just fill in the word I used before a bunch of woke folks. Um, yeah. And I, you know, somebody wanting, wanting to, uh, a preferred pronoun, I ask everybody I meet, uh, what should I call you? And they'll say, well, you can call me this or you can call me that, and I don't really care. And my response is, well, that your self-naming is something the government has yet to take away from us, so why don't you tell me exactly what you want to be called and I'll call you that. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, I, my, uh, my preferred pronoun is sir. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, I think we beat this one to death, uh, or, or I talked around it. But it's you know it's a shame that the only people that have to follow the law are private citizens, folks. Governments uh, break the law all the time, and there are no consequences. They renege on contracts, they uh, break into people's homes, they falsify documents, and all the rest of that. And I don't see a whole lot of, uh, of people who work for the government at any level going to jail, but if you or I did that, uh, we'd get fined and we'd go to jail, that's for sure. Well, at a more philosophical level, in effect, government is a criminal gang that has a monopoly on the use of force. Mm. And they use it to raise taxes mm. that nobody wants to pay, but mm. they're forced to uh, at the point of a gun, ultimately, or, or, or going to jail mm. if, they, if they don't. Uh, they are forced to obey a lot of uh, laws that have absolutely nothing to do with public safety or uh, mm -hmm. individual citizens uh, being uh, exerting their force or mm -hmm. uh, on, on other people or being fraudulent or anything like that, mm -hmm. uh, simply using substances uh, or uh, practicing uh, sexuality or, or you know doing doing things or selling services, <laughs> doing doing whatever the or good majority. The majority of people supposedly uh, disapprove of. Mm. So anybody who is a minority, uh, when it comes to social mores, uh, is at the mercy of this government gang, uh, and certainly we're all at the mercy of this government gang when it comes to uh, paying for the uh, the entire corrupt uh, operation. Mm. And it doesn't have to be that way. We have a constitution that allows for. Uh, well, it's I, written by a bunch of slave I, owners. Don't you know that? Yeah. It's uh, no good. It's no well, good. It, okay. But the slave owners, successors, fight a civil war to get rid of slave mm -hmm. uh, ownership. So 
you know, and the Constitution was amended mm -hmm. to make sure that sort of malpractice didn't happen again. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about the Constitution as it is with mm -hmm. the 14th Amendment, not mm -hmm. the Constitution that was originally uh, passed back in, back in the, at, the, at, the, at the onset. Mm -hmm. So the Constitution we have now, the existing con mm -hmm. con Constitution as, as amended, uh, is something that limits the amount of government that uh, what government can do, mm. or at least that's the intention. It should limit it. That's the intention. That's yeah. what the actual words say. Yeah. But what's happened is we have a government at the federal level and at the state level, but particularly at the federal level, where uh, politicians, members of Congress, say, I think it would be a nice idea to do a good thing, mm. whether it's, you know, uh, make sure that puppies don't get uh, uh, mutilated, mm. to uh, uh, make sure that uh, children, uh, you know, are, are do are, get are mutilated, are, are, are safe. To uh, make sure that uh, nobody, uh, uh, I don't know, mm. does anything, anything that is offends the woke crowd. Whatever it is, mm. we have a government that says we want to do this good thing, mm. but we're not going to write a law saying how that should take place. We're going to create an agency, and let the agency create write the law. Mm. So you end up with regulatory uh, mm. agencies like the FDA, like the mm. FTC, you know, all of the alphabet agencies mm. writing laws because they've been delegated mm. to write laws. It's called rules and regs, but mm. in fact, they're laws when it comes to the mm. actual uh, enforcement level, and they're the enforcement uh, yeah. of so those laws. Thankfully, the Supreme Court's been kind of backing down. They've been ruling against some of the agencies. Finally. Yeah, yeah. but it's taken, I mean, It's forever. taken decades. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, well, then, and, and people, I want to I wanna throw in my two cents. Jack's going to talk a little bit about our, our, our government corruption, because what, what we've had is the Constitution was corrupted in the 60s and 70s by a, a I hate to word to use, use the word liberal, but a very government-centric uh, Supreme Court that came up with uh, supporting all of these regulatory agencies, which were, you know, created, some of them were created, most of them under Nixon, who was supposedly a Republican. Um, and, uh, you know, patently, if you look at the Constitution, giving a regulatory agency all three powers that are vested in our government, which is judicial, legislative, and executive, is is patently unconstitutional. It's that what's, that's what uh, uh, these these uh, letter these alphabet agencies have and and I think that's one of the reasons that uh, according to reason uh, there they quoted a survey that said that most Americans think government is corrupt something like 70 percent now there's still the the silly little simpletons that are the core of the Democratic Party I'm not talking about the the, the uh, thugs that are the core of the Republican Party, but the simpletons that are the core of the Democratic Party don't believe that. But just about everybody else does. Uh, they believe that government is corrupt. And, and one of the ways that government is corrupt is by is, is oppressing um, certain um, groups through these regulatory agencies while favoring others. For example, um, favoring um, uh, greens, radical greens, through the EPA, while oppressing people who try to run a business. Now, you, I want Zach to talk a little bit about government corruption. You got an opinion well, on that? I mean, that. even with the last story, uh, they're simultaneously discriminating, like in favor of minorities, while also in the college level discriminating against minorities because they make up. Uh, too great of a student population mm. or whatever. Yeah, too many Asians. Right. Just like it used to be too many Jews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Harvard, Harvard kept out the Jews. Now they're keeping out the Asians. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but then they'll be like, oh, well, we have to uh, uh, raise awareness about Asian uh, community community issues or whatever, while they're like specifically causing mm -hmm. yeah, that's, problem. Yeah, that's that's uh that's causing some payback in the in the in the Bay Area. They they. Uh, went after a very motivated, very wealthy group of people who are in the Bay Area, not, not, a, uh, not a minority. <laughs> so that resulted in some, uh, some people in the Bay Area getting, uh, getting thrown out of their positions as woke uh, um, folks on school boards. So yeah, yeah corruption, uh, anybody who does not think our government is corrupt simply has to step into a courtroom uh, and watch uh, uh, district attorney uh, f 
force someone a plea bargain, which they do 97% of the times right, rather than go to trial, because if you go to trial, the government will do everything they can to, to stack charge upon charge upon charge, threaten that, threaten your life with that and put you in prison unless you appeal to a, uh, if, yeah, I don't know if, if that isn't corruption, what isn't? And that kind of leads us into, uh, I talked a little bit about uh, um, favoring, courts favoring uh, radical green initiatives in um, Canada uh, and other places, uh, and uh, Denmark and Ireland. Uh, farmers are, are warning that uh, new emission restrictions will affect uh, the food supply. Well, it's more, it's more than, it's, it's, even, it's more than emissions. Yeah. Uh, in Sri Lanka and in the Netherlands in particular, uh, farmers are in open and uh, drastic rebellion against, uh, in, in, Euro in, in Holland against the European Union and uh, in Sri Lanka against the government, it's the government of Sri Lanka. And it's based on the use of nitrogen fertilizer. Mm. Now, uh, you work uh, a little bit in, in uh, agriculture, and I yeah. have a background in agriculture. And without nitrogen, potassium, and potash, you don't grow anything. No. It's not possible. And you have to have a certain amount of nitrogen, potash, and potassium in order to produce a, a crop of, of pretty much anything. And a hill of beans. The you need that for a hill of beans. Government, you know, the uh, the the greens operating under the auspices of the world health uh, the uh, european union and i'm not sure who uh, world organization i forget the name of it uh, in sri lanka are essentially setting quotas on the amount of nitrogen that can be used for fertilizer which in sri lanka which was supposed to be a showpiece of environmental pro uh, progress uh, progressiveness their yields have gone down to the point where people are starving and the people in Sri Lanka said, the hell with this. And they forcibly evicted the, pr the premier of Sri Lanka out of the presidential palace, brought in a new government. Now, where it goes from there, I, I, I have no idea. Well, I bet they're the going to be able to lose fertilizer. But they're the cause of fertilizer. the problem was you farmers can't use one of the three essential uh, ingredients for growing crops, for growing food. Mm. Same thing is happening in, uh, in the Netherlands. People are saying, the European Union uh, is saying to uh, the Dutch government that unless, you, know, you need to cut down on the use of nitrogen to the point where you can't produce as much milk. And get rid of a whole bunch of cows. And get rid of a bunch of cows, because I guess they fart too much. I'm not really sure. Right. Well, and they want to replace diesel with electricity, uh, but most of the electrical uh, piece of equipment can only run for- they want, Yeah, they want, they want uh, equipment to run on coal power rather than, right. rather than oil power. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure that'll work out well. Well, I'm, yeah. I want to say it was something like uh, seven hours of usage in an electric machine requires like 12 hours of charge. And if you're working somewhere off grid, that means you have to run a diesel engine for longer than you'll be running the non-diesel piece of equipment. Yeah, I mean, instead the, the, of running the regulations <laughs> on a practical level, most often or quite often, make absolutely no sense. Right. So you can, you can make practical arguments against the green agenda, and you can make life and death arguments against the green agenda, which is that if the greens have their way, food production is going to go down. Mm. People are going to starve. And of course, a lot of greens, a lot of the more radical greens, they don't care. are fine with that. Fine with right. They think the population of the world is way too high. It and should, should be, be about 500 be, million living in their way villages, down. cooking and their food over How do you do that? Well, birth Except control for is them. one way, but the other way is you just, start, you, just, you just start people out of existence. And that's that's what's happening in places like Sri Lanka, and s the incipient stages are, are happening in places like the Netherlands and Canada. Mm. Will the United States be far behind? I sure hope not, mm. because I, I own farms, and I know that mm. you have to use nitrogen fertilizer. Mm. Now, yep. I'm not exactly sure wh how nitrogen harms the environment. I mm. guess I don't know, it causes well, all the all water if, if you crunch the numbers that they're talking about, it's like less than one one hundredth of a percent of the total so-called green gas problems. Uh, if if all of the radical, uh, powerful uh, greens that are pulling levers behind the behind the curtain would give up their private jets, it would more than make up for that. So um, let's talk a little bit more about uh, governments uh, doing crazy things and and for reasons that we don't even know. Uh, recently, 
um, in geologic time, I think it was less than a year ago, the uh, FBI cracked open a whole bunch of uh, safe deposit boxes in a, in a private um, safe deposit company in Southern California uh, against the, the they, they had a warrant that allowed them to go after just a couple of them for very specific reasons, which we're not allowed to know because I think there were FISA warrants. But then they cracked open a whole bunch of them. Essentially and, all of them. Huh? Essentially, Essentially all, all, all of them. All, all of the safes. Even though they were yeah. told that they could only go after just a few. There's, there's, there's no, they, they haven't published any reason for doing so. It's not associated with any a racketeering thing that's been published. Nobody's come forward to talk about it. It was a fishing and expedition. Yeah. What? It was a fishing that's expedition. A completely speculation, but like be, being them, them being completely silent about the warrant leads everyone to believe it's a FISA warrant. Yeah. If it's a FISA warrant, then they use Patriot Act nonsense yeah. to claim that well, they had a warrant against the owner of the building. Yeah. So that, that gives them the right to have access to everything in the building. Doesn't give you, but see, they're not even saying that. No, they're just, not yeah. even responding to it. And any documents that they're releasing, which are few and far between, are so redacted mm -hmm. that you can't figure out what they're doing. And I'm trying to figure out how much time we got left. I think it's five or six minutes. So, uh, and anybody in our audience, in our audience, we have this. No, we can't see you at home. This isn't really 1984. But raise your hands if you think that the FBI is constantly breaking the law, hiding stuff, and going after people that the deep state doesn't like. Okay, I mean, all of our audience just raised their hands. Uh, I'm, I'm probably on a whole bunch of terrorist watch lists, and I'll tell you why, I write thrillers. Uh, not to plug myself, but the first one's called Rewire, and it's available on, on the major purveyor of, of books on the planet. And the second one is Rekill, and, and the third one isn't uh, up there yet, but will be Aristocracy. And so I'm constantly researching things about uh, false IDs, how to go dark off the web, blowing stuff up, killing people, all these things. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would be shocked if I'm not on six or seven terrorist lists. But they're in my books, and the books are, you know, published. So that's my reason. Scouts honor FBI. Don't arrest me tonight. I got to go get a, a meal after the show. So last thing we want to cover, and I'm I I when I put the, these topics together, I wanted something that was a little ray of hope, and I think there's been some hope here, that uh, the PLF Pacific Legal Foundation is is suing uh, Alameda County to make them follow the law, and the second thing is that most Americans have finally woken up to the fact, not got woke, but woken up to the fact that the government is corrupt. Uh, and um, five minutes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Richard uh, close the, 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 sh the last five minutes out talking about something that uh, gave me a huge ray of hope when, when I read it. Uh, well, you want to talk about yeah, uh, I mean, nuclear fusion? One of the things that we need to be really, really clear about as libertarians is that we have absolutely nothing against uh, cleaning up the air, cleaning up all. the water, right. uh, and making sure that we do everything that's reasonably, and the key word is reasonably possible, mm. to uh, get, get rid of everything uh, that makes sense. Get rid of smog. Get rid of uh, carbon dioxide, if in fact it's a problem. Uh, and doing some actual, uh, you know, legitimate research on finding out whether carbon dioxide is is actually more than plant that's food. illegal. Can't more do that. than more than plant food. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the rays of hope in the energy field, and all of the all of the all the the pollution arguments are, you know, are aimed at fossil fuels for the most part. Uh, whether it's coal, uh, whether it's natural gas, whether it's oil, you name it, they're all uh, fossil but fuels. But they like those bird choppers, and right? Well, and again, if you're talking about uh, wind energy, there's an awful lot of, uh, awful lot of uh, uh, fossil fuel energy that goes into uh, making the steel, yeah. uh, mining the iron ore, yeah. uh, doing everything that's yeah. necessary in order to build those huge fans, yeah. and they wear out after a few years. And, so and the, you can't recycle those big plastic fans, folks. Yeah. They're going to last forever. But there is a Way ray longer of than Richard. in the private sector, and it's primarily the private sector, that is experimenting and co very coming very close to making nuclear, not fission, but nuclear fusion a reality. 
Uh, there are a number of companies that have figured out how to use magnetic fields, and this is way over my head technically, but they figured out how to use magnetic fields, they figured out how to use other, you know, uh, ray guns, for lack of a better word, to figure out how to make the uh, uh, collision, or, or the, to make, to make atoms uh, fuse together fuse and together release energy and doing release so. energy like the without, sun without like any the sun, without folks. any radioactive byproducts at all yeah and and with a net energy gain from doing so mm. once that technology is in place you have you have essentially the the ability to create unlimited, unlimited very energy. low cost electrical energy in, in which case all of the all of the uh, Teslas, all of the uh, electric cars, electric uh, uh, helicopters, all of the things that the Greens are really enamored uh, of, can become hoverboards. A, can become a, On a hoverboard. A, a practical reality rather yeah. than a pipe dream, rather yeah. than a, uh, a, uh, a problem that causes more, or a, a solution that causes more mm. problems than it solves. So I, th I think that's incredibly uh, optimistic, mm. incredibly uh, positive development. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is that technology is our friend. Not the population, enemy, folks. Population growth is our friend because productivity, because growth of the economy, because human prosperity depends on two things. One, people actually out going out and producing things, welding joints or writing books Smoking or joints. whatever, uh, and the technology to do it more efficiently. So yep. you've got technology, Unlimited growth in technology, unlimited growth in population. Put those things two together, two things together with with uh, uh, very inexpensive energy, and you have the. We can uh, populate the universe. You, <laughs> you you have the the ingredients for a prosperous world without all of the problems that we are experiencing or all the greens are afraid of. And and I want to close on. We're talking about how wonderful fusion is. The the last. Uh, experiment that some great folks in, in uh, uh, England are doing was kind of going old school. Instead of using lasers, they actually fired projectiles at this fusion yeah. to get it to light up. So sometimes you think the only way to advance is by being advanced, but sometimes you, you got to go old school and combine those two technologies. And I want folks, ladies and gentlemen, there's a guy named Schellenberger, uh, I think Schellenberger, who pointed out something that I, despite being so pro-nuclear power that I should have radioactivity coming out of my, well, I don't have hair, I didn't think about. Uh, nuclear power is the only kind of power we have on this planet where the byproducts are contained. The other power sources, the byproducts are released into the atmosphere, released into the ground, uh, come out as heat and all the rest of that. And in France, they recycle spent nuclear fuel. And on that note, folks, I want to say thank you very much for watching Libertarian Counterpoint tonight. Thank you very much, Zach. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Richard. Nice of you to join us. And good luck in Yellow County. Hey, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, on the website, we'll put up a way to get a hold of you so we can get the party started. Sounds get good. the party started, folks. Thank you.